Good morning and welcome to Little by Little, a short time in God's Word. Turn with me again to Matthew chapter 9. We read, Getting into a boat, he crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blasphemy. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were afraid, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch tears away from the garment, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wine skins. If it is, the skins burst and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. New wine is put into fresh wine skins, and so both are preserved. While he was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples, and behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for twelve years came up behind him and touched on the fringe of his garment. For she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. Instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, the girl is not dead, but sleeping. They laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl rose. And the report of this went throughout all that district. So this ruler comes in and kneels before Jesus, desiring and requesting his presence, his touch, to make whole once again. He's displaying tremendous faith and confidence in Jesus. If you would but come, I know she will live. But before we continue with the story, as he's on the way, there's this interruption as Jesus is touched by someone, this woman who has been suffering for 12 years. In that day, would have been unclean, shouldn't have been around people, shouldn't have gotten close. So by her touching just the fringe of the garment, just the bottom edge, she was getting as close as she dared. And Jesus knew, and he saw her, he said, your faith has made you well. She was healed. He didn't rebuke her. He didn't kick her to the curb. He met her where she was. And so they arrive at the ruler's house, and the mourners are there, and Jesus says, hey, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. And they laughed. And so Jesus comes in, and he raises her up. And it's an interesting little twist, right? Because you've got the, the master, presumably, the ruler, who displayed great faith, and everybody else. No, like that's not gonna happen. Hmm. And Jesus raised her up. Where's your faith today? When you pray, is it expectantly? Are you believing that what you pray for, what you pray about, God is going to answer, God is going to do? I think far too often, I know in my prayers, I either don't pray bold enough, or I don't ask enough, or I don't expect it to come true. I think we're to ask in believing, and then we'll be receiving 
that which we ask in his name. Let's by faith ask God, reach out, ask him for the impossible, and watch and see.